Hey guys, Tristan here to talk more about Foxfire Dying Light. Uh, this is the book that I wrote, and there's my proof. It's my name right there. Anyway, uh, if you didn't watch my last video, the, that video kind of covers more what the book is about, and I encourage you to check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, this video is going to be more about what the how the God system works in this book. Uh, so, well, let's get started. Now, to start off, I'm going to tell you that I got my inspiration for the God system from two places. Uh, the game, Genshin Impact, and Dragon Ball Super. And I'll kind of get more into how those inspired this system when I get there. Um, but first, we're going to start off with Idenaris. Now, Idenaris is the omnipotent, all-powerful no one's higher than me god maybe other than his wife <laughs> Telia who is also an all-powerful all omnipotent god uh, Idenaris is referred to as the father of the gods and Telia is referred to as the mother of angels and I'll kind of cover that a little bit also uh, together they created the nine elemental gods you know their elemental children and then Telia afterwards used her power to create the angels which is how she kind of got the title um, Mother of Angels. Alright, so then you have the Nine Elemental Gods. And this is where the Genshin Impact inspiration comes in. Because in Genshin Impact, they got the seven Archons. And each Archon is holds dominion over one of the elements. And if a mortal catches their attention, in a positive way of course, they bestow to them a, a little trinket called a, uh, a vision that gives them limited control over the element that said god holds dominion over. And it's kind of similar to how it works here, except each mortal is born soul-bound to one of the gods, sometimes sometimes two of them. And there's a small small chance that they could be born with the ability to, to cast magic from that element that that god holds dominion over. Now, it is a small chance, and I'll kind of cover that more when I... In the next video, I'm going to talk more about how magic works in this world. And I'll cover that a little bit more there. Alright, so first we have, we have Justina, the goddess of light. And I talked about this in a previous video. Justina is actually named after my sister, Justina, who passed away back in 06. I thought a good way to honor her would be to name a god after her. And uh, so together they all created the realm of mortals. And they all kind of pitched in in their own way. Justina created the first race that ever walked the planet Sulma, and she created there. She created the elves, and they all, even if they're not born soul bound to her, they still worship her as the elven goddess. And whenever she visits uh, the mortal realm, she does disguise herself as an elf maiden. Uh, actually, before I go on with that, let me bring that up. The gods ha are not allowed to directly influence the affairs of mortals. They can. They can kind of push push mortals to do things based on, you know, divine signs and stuff like that. You know, you pray for a sign from the gods and they tell you to do this. But they cannot force you force a mortal to do that, to do what they want. The angels have a little bit more control over that, like a little bit more uh, freedom when it comes to that. But not even they're not allowed to directly influence anything. So when they go, when they visit the mortals in the mortal realm on Solma... They have to be very, very careful not to to do something like that, you know. Uh, so next up, we have Jalal, the god of shadows. Now, the name Jalal comes from fairy tale, which is an anime that I'm very fond of. But, so, shadow, shadow magic in itself is evil. Jalal, when he was created to take control over it, was not. But thousands and thousands of years of, of trying to hold that shadow magic under control it finally affected him and that's why he kind of plays the he's essentially fallen into darkness is a good way to put it more about that in the book uh and he created the demon realm every demon is born soul bound to him some mortals are too but every demon is born soul bound to him and they have a higher chance of being able to use shadow magic than any mortal has about uh any of the other elements um but again, that will be more covered in the next video that's about magic. Uh, he does visit the the mortal realm, but he essentially whenever he his disguised self is basically just a you know a sketchy hooded person. Uh, let's see. Okay, so then you got 
the god of stone, Tomale. Now, Tomale created dwarves. Shocker, right? Uh, so, as such, he kind of takes the appearance of dwar of the dwarf whenever he visits the mortal realm. And he formed all of the mountains and all of the ore and stuff that they that they mine. So they he created Tomorrow Night. Now Tomorrow Night is the is a it's an, uh, a crystal ore that resonates with magic in a very unique way. It's used to forge uh, spell focus weapons, which spell focus weapons are basic. They're basically just weapons that can uh, funnel funnel uh magic better than any other weapon again another thing to be covered later uh they could also be used as essentially communication devices you know they you attune to a, a chunk of tomorrow night and you can use it to communicate with someone else with a chunk and that's just kind of how i eliminated the communication problem for a fantasy era you know where there's no phones all right we have next up the goddess of flames agniar now she contributed by creating humans, basically. And that's just about all I really have for her. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll move on then. To the goddess of water, Kai. Now, all of the, all of the gods are siblings. They're all siblings, but goddess of water, Kai, and god of ice, Kull, are twins. Uh, Kai is kind of, in per terms of personality, more bubbly, while Cole is very much the ice, stereotypical ice person. You know, you see someone that has power over ice, generally they're calm, cool, and collected. And that's Cole. Uh, then you got up the god of nature, Johan. Now, Johan, he created the wildlife. You know, he's the god of nature. So he kind of created the wildlife, and then... He created some beasts that he deemed too dangerous to be in the realm of mortals. So he created the realm of beasts. And any beast that he deemed too either too dangerous or just felt it didn't belong in the mortal realm, I guess, he put in the realm of beasts. And with, uh, mages can go to the realm of beasts and make contracts with these beasts and use them as summoning creatures. And whenever they form that summoning contract, they the beast falls under his divine protection. And so if they get killed and killed in battle in the mortal realm, they don't actually die. They just go back to the realm of beasts where the contract will then begin to heal them. The, they'll be healed by divine magic. That basically ex explains that, but I'll cover it again in the next video. Uh, then you have the god of lightning, Raynan. Raynan's name actually comes from one of my newest D&D characters who holds dominion over or is a sorcerer with uh flavored for lightning magic uh Raynan is basically the name is a pun on raiden and then also canon from star wars uh i think i had it so that he basically just helped agniar with uh mortals uh, excuse me with humans <clears throat> Let's see. Next, last but not least, we have the goddess of wind, Ella. She's the youngest of the siblings, and as such, when she appears in the mortal realm, she often shows up as kind of with a childlike appearance. She'll take, you know, she'll take the appearance of a small human child. Uh, she, she liked the the mortals that her siblings had created, and she liked the beasts and animals that uh, Johanna had created. So she's like, well, what happens if we smash them together? So. She created the El Orion race. Now, the El Orion race covers basically any any humanoid animal race, you know, like Tabaxi and uh, Turtle Folk and all those from D and D. I did I did rename them for the story. Like Tabaxis are called cat spawns and whatnot. But she created all of them. The most common El Orions that you see are humans with animal like features. Basically, just the you know the, the uh, thing you see common in anime and whatnot. The humans with the cat ears cat tail or whatever but of various animals and they started off uh kind of like how humans did you know primal but they were heavily heavy heavy on the on their animal instincts for a long long time until they finally finally civilized and started mingling with other other races and that's kind of where their ancient el orion race or, excuse me language went extinct because they started adopting the common tongue 
but that's another thing that's covered more in the book than I should cover here. Uh, so that's that does it for the elemental gods. So cut video, so that way in case I mess up the next segment, I don't have to redo it all. So now we get into the angels. Now, like I said earlier, Telia used her power to create the angels to serve her children in, you know, whatever they need, also to guide them and, you know, eliminate them if absolutely necessary. They were all, they all wield Godslayer weapons, a different, different one for each one. Uh, so the angel assigned to Justina is named Abigail. Now I named her Abigail because my sister Justina had a dog named Abby when she, uh, when she was alive. A cool thing that I did that I'm actually quite proud of, Abby actually ended up losing her left eye to cancer. And unfortunately that's actually what killed her too. The cancer spread to her lungs and took her life. So Abigail has a patch over her left eye. Now the, the reason for her eye missing is different than Ab uh, Abby's because I don't know that angels can get cancer. But uh, I'm not going to say what that is. I didn't say what it is in the last video because that's spoilers and I don't like spoilers. <laughs> uh, she wields Heaven's Light, which is you're, uh, basically a magic staff that holds c that can control light. Shocker from the name, right? <laughs> uh, so then we move on to Jalal's angel Karai. Now it's the same with Karai. Karai was not evil at first. She fell to darkness alongside uh, of uh, Jalal. So that's why she didn't carry out her mission to kill Jalal like she was supposed to if he tries to disrupt the balance between the elements. I guess that's something I kind of forgot to mention earlier. The gods' sole mission is to hold balance over the elements. They are not to do anything to disrupt that. They have to hold on to it. And how they do that is with souls soul bound to them. Now they obviously don't have an exact even amount of souls bound to them as everyone else, but they are they have to try to keep it as close as possible. Um, uh, Tomale's angel is named Axton. Axton wields Solma's soul, which is a warhammer. I felt a warhammer made most sense for a stone element. Uh... Goddess of Flames, Agniar, her angel is named Iken, and he uses Firestorm Discs, which are basically, you know, fancy discs with the uh, the handle in the center, blades on the around them. Kind of not unsimilar to Axel from Kingdom Hearts. They don't look quite like as intense as those, but that. Uh, Goddess of Waters, Kai is, is Sarah, who partners with Culls, which is Shelby. Sarah and Shelby are two childhood uh, dogs that we had. They were German Shepherd Border Collie mix, two of the best dogs ever. They ended up passing away of old age. I wanted to name them, wanted to include them in the naming scheme that I've been doing. Uh, Sarah's weapon is the Rain Giver, which is a trident. I felt a trident was the most appropriate for a water, you know. <laughs> uh, Cole, uh, excuse me. Shelby's weapons are fro or what I call frost harbingers, and they're fist knives. Basically, it's not unsimilar, uh, dissimilar to those discs, but they are the bladed weapons that, kind of like brass knuckles but with blades. Essentially, you know. I was I looked everywhere to see if they were actually had a, an official name. I could only find uh, fist uh, fist knives, so that's what I called them. <laughs> uh, Johan's angel's name is Joshua. And it's not Joshua, it is Joshua. That is intentional. It's an inside joke between me and my coworkers. Uh, we had a product that came through our store. It was a Bible verse, uh, a plaque with a Bible verse on it. But uh, Joshua was misspelled, so we actually had to pull and destroy them. It was misspelled, and it was actually said Joshua. And they said, well, you should name a character in your book Joshua. And I was like, I guess I'm going to name a character in my book Joshua. So here we go. Uh, Raynan's angel. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Totally forgot the weapon. Jushua's uh, god slayer weapon is beast spirit, which are claws, you know, the claws that blades like a wolverine, but not like wolverine, you know, because they're not, they don't actually shoot out of his hands. Yeah. Uh, so Rainian's angel is called Tamias. Now, Tamias is a name I first heard in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the card is called uh, the Eye of Tamias, I believe. Uh, 
I was just a fan of the name, and I used it. I used it. I have a swashbuckler rogue named Django, and he has a as a bird companion named Tamias, and I I wanted to use the name in this too, so I gave it to the angel, and his god slayer weapon is called Storm Reach, and it is a f about uh, goddess of winds. Ella's angel is named Ailita. Ailita, like a couple other names that I used, came from Code Lyoko. It's an old show. A lot of you my age probably remember it and think thought it was a fever dream. Because I did until I rediscovered it in high school. Uh, and her god slayer weapon is, uh, is called Squall. And it's a spear. Uh, so yeah, they, like I said, the angels serve as the gods... Um, guide, instructor, executioner, if needed. Uh, I don't believe I actually mentioned it earlier, but that's kind of where the Dragon Ball Super inspiration came from, because all of the destroyer gods in Dragon Ball Super have angel attendants that serve as their instructor in exactly what they these ones serve as. Um, okay, moving on. So that does cover just about everything that I wanted to cover in this video. At least everything that I can remember. I'm sure I'll think of something that I was like, oh, I forgot to talk about that. You know, when I'm done. When everything's uploaded and everything. Uh, so, uh, Foxfire Dying Light. Sorry, I'm not good with the webcam areas yet. Foxfire Dying Light is available on Amazon. The paper copy is $14.99. The ebook $4.99. And it is free for Kindle Unlimited. Uh, be sure to follow my Facebook page, Tristan L. Author. That is the best place to get updates on anything that I want to post about Foxfire or future or the next book. I want to do a trilogy, actually, of the story. And anything else that comes from this story depends on what the audience is like when I get all three out. If it's, you know, big enough or, it, yeah, basically, if it's big enough and fans are invested enough, I'll do more stories, you know, I don't know, spinoffs other stories prequels sequels i don't know we'll worry about it when we get there um make sure to follow my subscribe subscribe to my youtube account which is where this video is going to go i was originally making it for tiktok but i believe those are limited to 10 minutes in this past 10 minutes oops i was debating using my youtube to promote book promote this book anyway i haven't used this since i dabbled in stop motion animation when i was like 12 14 Anyway, long time ago. Uh, so be sure to follow that. That is Baby Owl Productions. Um, Instagram also Tristan Allen Author. I'll put a link put a link in the comment section of this video. Uh, TikTok is also Tristan Allen Author. Um, so again, thanks for watching. I hope you found it informative. I hope it was interesting. And if you have any questions, please be sure to ask. I will answer them as long as I can. Do it without spoilers. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching.